still feels like the middle of winter outside known as barn. But it's March. The first lamb of the year has just been born. Nona doesn't get much sleep during lambing season. She's up every few hours helping the mothers. Before long, the barn is full of lambs. Danielle helps Nona separate them. works with some neighbor girls who want to show lambs at fairs in the fall. For now, the lambs have numbers on their backs, so Nona can tell them apart. Jesse has her lamb ready, and Amber gets hers. The girls will work with their lambs all summer, helping them learn to be calm and quiet. Today, the lambs are getting a look at the world outside the barn. Dave and Kay are out with their dogs today. They're moving a flock of sheep to a new pasture where there will be more for them to eat. sheep to do much of anything, so it's a good thing you can train dogs. Border Collies are bred and trained to herd sheep and they love to work. The dog on leash is still learning her job. It's a hot day and it's important to stop every so often to let the sheep rest and have a snack. That goes for the dogs, too. Sometimes it's nice just to stop and look at things. from the new field is pretty, but the sheep are interested in the fresh clover. And the dogs? What better reward could they want? When they're working, the border collies can recognize around 40 different commands. 
Sometimes sheep are guarded by a llama, but only the dogs can herd them. Most of the work is done with just a few commands. Clockwise is come by. Counterclockwise is away to me. To walk in or move up means to walk straight in on the animal and then down stops them. Dave can also control the dogs by whistle commands. Right there, Teal. See how it works? Back one. Girl. Teal, walk there, down, and you see the sheep were brought over to me. The dogs Good like to dog. play as hard as they work. Dave's son, Colin, gives them a hand. These dogs are taught to jump, and it's good for their backs. Do you? Where there's sheep, there's wool. This wool will make a lot of stops on its way to becoming a blanket, a sweater, or maybe a pair of warm mittens. At this sheep and wool festival, the whole process will be shortened. It's called a sheep to shawl contest. Each team has four hours to go from shearing a sheep to finishing a shawl. The first step is called carding. It's a way of combing the wool to get it ready for spinning. Some teams wear costumes to go with their names. Each team has carders, spinners, and a weaver. Spinning wheels help twist the wool into long threads of yarn. The spinners help guide the wool as it twists and spins. The yarn collects on a bobbin. As soon as there's enough yarn on the bobbin, it's passed over to the weaver. Then everyone has something to do. Finally, it's time to finish up. Everyone pitches in to get the shawls off the looms and ready for the judges.
In the real world, wool goes through the same stages. Some goes to custom spinneries like this one in Vermont. This wool will be spun in its natural color. Now I've got this sorted dark wool, and this has got a bag in here. The bag is weighed, the wool is washed, dried, and loaded into a carding machine. The carter works just like the ones the sheep to shawl teams used. Well, maybe not exactly the same, but it does comb the wool. The wool comes out combed and soft. Then it's rubbed together into strands. Later, the strands from the carter will be spun into yarn. Not far away in New Hampshire, this company makes looms and they have a spinnery. Today, they're working with color. They start by mixing blue, purple, and white wool. On the carter, the colors blend together. These machines work like spinning wheels to twist the strands and make them stronger. Some machines combine the strands to make thicker yarn. Others are used to wind the yarn into skeins. These colored yarns will be used in a weaving kit for beginners. It doesn't take long for lambs to grow up. It's fall, and that means it's time to get ready for the fairs. Amber, Jesse, and Rachel are ready for their first year of showing sheep. It takes a lot of work to get ready for each fair. Rachel and Corinne work with their mother to get their lambs ready, but first they have to catch them. Once the lambs are on their stands, it's time for washing.
Finally, the lambs are trimmed and ready. They have their own coats to keep them clean until showtime. With the lambs ready, there are other things to take care of, like making sure they'll have food handy. At Nona's house, things start early on a fair day. The sheep who stay home still have to be fed and watered. Nona wears a mask to keep out dust from the hay. Rachel and Corinne just have two sheep to move, but it's still a challenge. Nona stops to pick up some sheep from her friends. Then they're off. Here they come.
There are different kinds of competitions at the fairs, and there's always something to do to clean or brush or trim just a little bit more. During the events, you have to keep your sheep calm and under control while the judge watches everything. We had, we had to like push all the Sometimes the judge gives you advice that will help you do better. This competition is called Lead Line. Each girl and boy wears an outfit made of wool and they write something about themselves. Rachel? Hello, my name is Rachel Holmes. I am nine years old. I'm wearing a jumper that I made by myself with my mother's help. Hi, my name is Jesse Wachiskit. This is my first year showing, and I am a novice showman. When the event begins, each person walks around the arena while a judge reads what they've written to introduce themselves. Hi, my name is Amber Tonkin. This is my first year showing sheep. My partner is Tulip. The breed of my sheep is Chevy. Her name is Josephine. I'm leasing her this year from Willow Tree Farm. It's not easy for the judges to make up their minds. They ask everyone to walk around one more time. Finally, they're ready with their decisions. It's nice to win, but the real fun is just doing it all. 